Last night, while the housemates were waiting on Big Brother to fix an electrical issue in the house, Ben suggested that they do they have a truth or you know there is a way they do this their truth or their question. You know, they always have a game which at the end you don't pick a truth. When you fail that game, you then go ahead to pick a truth or a day. It's just such a juicy one. But then let's start from the beginning. So Victoria and Cassia <laughs> had a, a two aside as usual. And they were talking about the whole Onyeka issue about Victoria having to change into a shutter skirt because of Ozzy. And Victoria said it's funny because that day she actually changed because a diary session was going on and she decided to, you know how you want to look good now, so that big brother calls her uh, hey, camera is on you and your pen and all that, only for Nyeka to turn it around. <laughs> that is because of man. And Victoria is not saying, so it means that moving on, if she wants to change skirt, she will not go to Nyeka and say, please, oh, permission to <laughs> permission to change my skirt. Victoria said that what even makes the whole scenario weird is how you claim you're not interested in this guy. And Kasia even mentioned that one day she overheard Chizoba and Onyeka having a discussion regarding Ozzy. And Chizoba was telling Onyeka that Ozzy wants her. Only for Onyeka to say, no, I'm not interested. And Victoria said, exactly, that's how it's weird. Because why would you claim you're not interested in somebody? And the next minute, you're worried about people who come close to them. You know, asking her first time second time third time about a guy you say you're not interested in that it makes the whole situation worse that having talked with ozzy that ozzy was even emphasizing on the need of how his other partner outside will even be feeling about the whole situation and the whole thing onyeka created in her head from there cassia mentioned on how no victoria mentioned on how she's going to miss chimwe and cassia said well chimwe might be needing to Chime might get the health care she deserves outside. And Victoria now started hinting towards pregnancy again. And I'm like, <laughs> bro. Just when I thought Chime is back to herself, I never knew that Chime was just having cramps without seeing the real pee. Anyways, Wani and Handy also confirmed to what Victoria was trying to say by saying that for the previous week, uh, Chime has been throwing up back to back. That she was messing up the whole restroom, you know, she wasn't getting herself. For every meal she has, the next thing she's showing up. Mm-hmm. That in fact, her mind told her Chingwe and Zion will be the next to be evicted. And then the man was asking her if she was if it was pregnancy, people would definitely know now. And one year Handy said, Well, she she herself, that's Chingwe herself. She said she has been knocking for Big Brother so as to get medical attention, but none of that came. And I listened to Chimney's diary session where she was telling brother, Big Brother, um, I knocked, the door wasn't open. I also t- told the HOH, the two heads of house, and they confirmed telling you. <laughs> but she went and covered it with, well, I know Big Brother wants to give me a special treatment, special health care, like, just like he, he usually do. Hmm. Um, uh, that one a dicey situation because how will someone be in your house and need that much medical attention and <laughs> well anyways she'll be fine outside now that she's out nelly and suj spend time together going through nelly's pictures childhood pictures pictures of her even when she puts her she, she also talked about when she puts her picture on uh sun newspaper the time she became a sun girl, how her phone blew, people calling her, and that this happened in 2014. <laughs> Almost some people tear eyes on time. <laughs> well, actually, I'm even surprised the way Nelly haven't cooked for Suj. When I mean cook, I don't mean food. Though. You know, with the whole thing that happened du- during the live show, Ibuka asking Suj questions regarding Onyeka and all that. I was surprised to see Nelly to go and hug Onyeka after the live show. I'm like, wow. Hmm, really? This is somebody that I've been having this thing 
between her and Chimwe that even when Chimwe was leaving, she didn't stand up to give her a final hug. So I was surprised seeing Nelly hug Onyeka and let her run, having a good time like nothing happened, nothing was dead with Suj. The lady, the Nelly I know could have used this little opportunity and cook up serious drama. <laughs> serious drama between her and Suj. Ozzy spent an hour plus now talking about Onyeka. <laughs> And me, I'm like, bro, it don't do now. He even said that if you go and check the whole Saturday night issue that happened between Suj and Nelly, or Nelly being jealous that someone, you know, Suj wasn't paying attention to her in the party. That if you still go and dig deep, you know, get past Onyeka. <laughs> Why is Onyeka in every problem, everything happening in the house? Well, he concluded his... Onyeka's nyash. That that nyash is very dangerous. That guys in the house need to avoid that nyash. <laughs> he also mentioned that of all questions asked, that he was surprised about the whole changing into a shorter skirt. That you know quite all right that this gear changed for a diary session. And only Osina said, only for you to now come and say, oh, I know these things. This gear changed because of this guy. <laughs> But they spent so in fact they made the the whole discussion about Sonia. Kind of like it's okay, we've heard it's okay, guy. Well, I guess I'm not the only one who was surprised that Nelly didn't react to that. Osi and Ozzy also mentioned that they were surprised that Nelly haven't reacted to Suj spank spanking um Onyeka. <laughs> well, I guess all is good in La La Land. Mickey, in a conversation with Femi and Kelly Ray, mentioned on how he's going to utilize this platform very well when he's out of the show. But Kelly Ray told him that you don't need to be out for you to start utilizing the platform, that everything starts from right in the house. Anon told Mickey that you know that dance st- that our dance stuff really trended, that for Ibuka to come on Sunday and still talk about it, that it means that it was a very hot one. And he now told Mickey that in that during that whole dancing stuff that the mistake you made was not owning it. That Femi owned his group, that Femi went ahead to show, oh, this is me, this is what I do. That for instance, that whenever a singing task comes up, that he's going to own that task like it's his own. Because he will use it and show the world what he's capable of. That even if people don't want to join in that task, if people are trying to bring rubbish ideas that he's going to start he will even want peace <laughs> he will give everybody violence as to own and stand out to that task and mickey started you know explaining why he didn't just want problem when people were turning down some of his ideas and kelly Roo advised him that every time is not for peace so the only thing is you find a way to be diplomatic about it you can those ones that are giving trouble maybe you will go through them give them some ideas on one-on-one and make it look like the idea even came from them but make sure that at the end you achieve your goal of showcasing yourself to the last drop now let's go to that truth or day that happened in between games last night meanwhile not even last night earlier early hours of this morning meanwhile shout out to ben ben was the one that initiated the whole thing because Actually, there was an emergency in Biggie's house early hours of this morning. Some electric wires were touching and bringing out smoke. So Biggie had to tell them to go to the garden. Now, hmm. see, you get some some question where person go ask you for this truth or day. Hmm. I'll always be looking at the person like, are you okay? Like Ben, dead TJ, when it was TJ's turn for a truth or day. And of course, now TJ picked truth. Ben, you are TJ's manest man. And then you started asking TJ, what is the longest you can go if your woman denies you? Mm? You know now. Yay! Even as the viewer, I was like, guy, are you okay? <laughs> well, TJ said, TJ actually answered though. TJ said, one week, if she denies me, I can go as long as one week before now coming to beg her to please that, you know? And Ben still went further. What if the both of you are not around? That you are in another place. And I'm like, oh, bro, what do you want to achieve tonight? Allow this Papa Ibeji enjoy his home. Oh. 
Nelly and Suj had the best time of their life as when Nelly was dead to kiss Suj for 10 seconds, <laughs> it was more than a French kiss. <laughs> Well, I don't know if the housemates took that street or their personal because tell me why Onyeka asked Handy in this house, who have you tried to imagine, imagine, you know, doing all those extra curriculum stuff with of all the guys, whether present or those that have left. And then Handy said it's TJ. Somebody's husband. <laughs> You're imagining you and somebody's husband. What hell are they? <laughs> Well, another thing that made me say, oh, maybe this thing, the housemate took it personal, was when TJ now dead Ben to go bring Chizoba. But Chizoba was even sleeping at this point and spank her for five times. <laughs> While all these streets out there was happening, Anita and Tofa were just inside, having the best time of their life, just it, and the next thing, they do stuff. <laughs> well, let me be honest, I love it for them. <laughs> so Femi later on was dead to go grab Handy's ass. And he was like, no, it's disrespectful. <laughs> and Kelly said, when is another person's turn to be dead? And they dead the person, you know, you'll be there saying, Oh, I live for this moment. I live for this moment. But whatever it gets to your tongue, you start speaking grammar on how it's disrespectful, how there is no concern. <laughs> I actually enjoyed the attitude of the then. When he was asked a question, if given an opportunity to speak to Sean, what will you tell him? And baby girl said, I will tell him I miss him. Hmm. It's okay. You were just the shout a few hours ago. He's not an alpha male. He's not an alpha male. I can't do this. I'm done. I'm done. The next time, Wani was now dead to go and kiss Sean. Now that time, her body now calmed down. Well, I guess it was a good kiss because after that, Wani and Sean then had a proper conversation that made them to make up. So, according to Sean, Sean now told Wani that you said I shoved your hand, that even the uh, when you were trying to pass that you said I was blocking you from moving out, that that wasn't the intention, that he was trying to open the middle door for you to go since you say you want to go. And Wani was like, oh, so you're actually opening that door for me to go and cry, right? How can you listen to yourself? How can you even enjoy, how can you even justify that intention? Wani done told Shonda, I understand you don't have the capacity to handle issues, especially between me and my sister, but I won't make excuse for you regarding your reactions that you actually went overboard. And Sean is like, that's why I'm trying to make it clear to you what actually happened and what my intentions were. That's one thing about you is that you don't listen. You vent all the time, but you barely even listen. You don't even listen to your own sister. That not like him himself is perfect, but at times you have to cool down and listen and pay attention. And I say, well, moving on, he won't try to come in between Wani and Handy's affairs again since he can't, he does not have that capacity to handle their issues. Sean also expressed himself further by telling Wani that in as much he, that he didn't handle that issue the best way he could have, that you on your own part need to learn how to think about other people's feelings as well. That it's always about you. You don't have to make everything about how you feel. That sometimes you need to think about how you make others feel as well. Well, Wani went ahead to apologize to Sean, how she's sorry, how it wasn't her intention, how she couldn't control herself. And Sean said, well, that's the problem, that you're very predictable, that he knew that this is the exact words you will come and say to him. That it's not about just apologizing, it's about being responsible and learning to own up your actions, learn to account for them. Well, after the whole back and forth, they reconciled and baby girl is back to, oh, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> Such a funny house. Anyway, week five is here upon us. Let's see what the house brings. But this house, I'm sure it's going to be boring, but well, because the people we know for action, action, they are all gone now. Well, let's see. Let's see how it goes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in my next video. Happy New Week. And do have a blessed week ahead. Bye.